Are you considering a consolidated way to keep your mobile, travel, or emergency comms equipment in one place? Here's my solution to that problem that might give you some ideas. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. One of the things that many folks find helpful is a radio go box. These boxes come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They can be as simple as an ammo can filled with HTs to an elaborate rack-mounted system with a variety of radios, tuners, and batteries to power it all. In this video, we're going to take a look at my version of a Go Box with an emphasis on the personal radio service radios and, of course, the ham bands. This collection is fairly lightweight well protected and focused on the VHF and UHF bands, not HF. I purchased several of the radios in this kit as well as done reviews where the kind folks at Radioddity have supplied the radios. They didn't supply anything directly in relation to this project, but I had some of their devices here around the shack. As a result, I decided to make it a, a Radioddity project just for fun. I wanted a clean installation without a bunch of wires all over the place, as well as a 12 volt control panel with USB outlets, a battery voltmeter, a 12 volt automotive socket, along with a covered master switch to help prevent inadvertent battery discharge. Speaking of the battery, I wanted room for a reasonably sized LiPo4 rechargeable battery too. I anticipated the need to have a separate bag of some kind for antennas and coax and the like. With the project requirements defined, it was time to do some layouts. I started with the inside dimensions of a couple of potential boxes. My initial survey led me to the hard cases from Apache sold at Harbor Freight. As you can see in this photo, my inner child decided to use some foam blocks to do the layout. My first attempt was with the Apache 3800 dimensions. It proved to be a bit too tight. The Apache 4800 would meet the need and, as luck would have it, I found a $10 off coupon, so off to Harbor Freight. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, so let's go back to the layout. As you can see here, I mapped out a box for my electrical connections to keep things nice and tidy and plotted in a 10 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. I also placed my two main rigs. They are both the same radio chassis. One is the QB25 and the other is the DB25G, both from Radiodity. I also placed a small external speaker that could be plugged into any of the radios. Not shown here is my plan to use Velcro to secure my Radiodity CS47 one-hander CB radio to the case's lid. This got me all my desired bands except for MERS. For that, I plan to throw in a MERS HT. So, with the plan in mind, it was time to check out Amazon for the various pieces and parts. I'll list them below in case you're interested. As you can see in this shot, this is what I ended up with. The plastic box will hold my switches and electrical connections, and there are some patch cables to connect to the radios to the bulkhead SO239 fittings. I got some covers for the exterior of the SO239 fittings, as well as a covered master switch and a 12-volt socket kit with 
the displays and features that I wanted. At the lower right corner is an electrical distribution block for inside the plastic box and a binding post. We'll see those in a minute. I modeled my battery connection after the one on the Explorer battery box I got from Gigaparts. The first task was to prepare the plastic box for its components. I used the bezel from the socket panel to mark the holes for the round components included in that kit. I'd order a step drill bit along with the other stuff and it worked great. Here you can see the bottom of the lid with the socket panel components and the master switch and bind post installed. This diagram shows the wiring scheme. Step one was to wire the socket panel. As with many things coming from China, there were no instructions. There was a wiring diagram on the sales page on Amazon, but interestingly, the plus and minus icons on the components didn't match the diagram. More on that in a minute. All my other connectors were going to be either ring, fork, or blade connectors, and all would be crimped. I had a Harbor Freight connector kit from a previous project, so I was good to go. I need to note that some of the components came with connectors too, so I had plenty. Here is the primary wiring described in the schematic. The wires for the socket panel came already assembled with the exception of the primary positive and negative leads. I doubled up the negative connector on the master switch with a link to the binding post and the distribution block using a blade connector. The wire looks red in the photo, but it was one of those dual red and black wires and you are seeing the red from where I pulled the two wires apart. Everything else, including the socket panel, will connect to the distribution block that is Velcroed to the bottom of the box. It's offset a little bit to provide room for the round components in the control socket set. I mentioned that I messed with the socket panel a while and couldn't get it to work. I checked the fuse and it looked okay and messed some more. Then I decided to test the fuse on my multimeter and sure enough, it was bad. I added a new fuse and as you can see here, it all came to life. The next step was to place the radios. My original plan had them front to back, and it turned out that didn't work. The rear radio display was just too hard to see. As a result, I placed them next to each other instead. There are a couple of things to point out in this photo. First, you can see I've cut a piece of quarter-inch plywood to fit the case and the radio mounting bracket screw into the wood. I got a small fabric covered rubber doormat to use as the inside liner. It was pretty easy to cut with a scissors. The mounting brackets slid through the mat from below and it allowed the power wires to hide beneath the mat as they go to the main circuit box. You can also see the patch cords going from the radios to the SO239 connectors on the side of the case. You'll also notice that the circuit box and battery cutout still have foam in place. I used the piece of foam that comes with the case that has the small little squares of foam pre-cut to allow the user to pull out the squares to fit whatever it is they're using the box for. So that foam was removed. In this shot, you can see all the radio connections on the distribution block. The battery wires and radio power wires enter the circuit box through grommets in the box's side. Here's a close-up of the antenna outputs on the side of the case. The little chained covers fit over the barrel and are secured with the locking nut. This shot shows the finished product, including the lid-mounted CS47CB radio. 
The little red box is a 150 watt inverter. I'm trying to decide if I want to store here or with my Explorer battery box. Okay, so with the project just about wrapped up, let's go for a video tour of the completed multi-band go box. So here's the primary box with all of the circuits here. Um, here's the positive and the negative where I'm going to put my uh, um, four millimeter banana plugs for charging the battery, which is located right here. Uh, here's the master switch for this box uh, and also the master switch for these other radios because they all connect to the uh, distribution block there that you've seen already. You see it lights up when it's on and then uh, as in many of the airplanes that I flew in the Air Force, it's got a cover on it that when the cover is closed, it'll, it'll open the circuit uh, and turn everything off. And so if the, the lid were to come down, that kind of thing, uh, it's not going to discharge by turning the circuit on. This little switch here will turn on this panel. And you can see that the panel illuminates. This is the 12 volt automotive style plug. Here is a, a couple of USB charge ports right there. Uh, this is the QB25 from Radioity, And you can see I've got it programmed. It's uh, working right there. Uh, and you can see the uh, channels that are selected much easier than when I had originally planned to put these front to back. Uh, this is the DB25G, the GMRS radio. And you can see I've got some the GMRS channels called up in that display with my amateur call sign and my GMRS call sign there down in the bottom. Here is a speaker. The speaker has a fairly long little wire that I can plug into any of these radios to get a larger sound. Uh, so far, I haven't found the need to do that, however. Uh, and then you can see the microphones. This is the, these are both identical microphones since the radio chassis are identical, just the firmware that's changed. So I can control the radio from the microphone or I can control the radio from the faceplate. Now let me move these out of the way just a little bit. So you can see here the um, patch cords coming out of the back of the radios go to the side of the, um, the case where I have the bulkhead connectors and so I can connect an antenna and then I can close the case if I need to uh, still keeping the antennas connected. Now, as I mentioned, the batteries here, it's a 10 amp hour battery, and both this box and the battery are uh, cut through and, and connected to the bottom of this Apache case uh, using um, some industrial strength Velcro. Now, up here, I've got a little CS47 uh, one-hander type CB radio. So that makes my third radio in this setup. Uh, and then here is the control for that, it's all on the microphone. So the microphone sits there. And then these two are just some uh, net style bags that I got from Amazon where I can put the owner's manual programming cable. Here's a uh, USB-C charge cable, some extra fuses that came with the distribution block. And so that's pretty much the entire uh, setup right here. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty compact. It's clean, which was one of my goals. Uh, and it fits in this 4800 Apache case. So uh, let me turn uh, this off, turn the master switch off, and then as you can see when I close the, the lid, everything is right there, uh, safe and sound, and so if I want to go camping, if I want to carry it into the house, if there were um, kind of an emergency and I wanted to set up a emergency comms in my kitchen uh, on a power outage, that kind of thing, I can do all of that. So I'll have the uh, links to all these components in the description to this for you to choose from if you'd like to try to build something similar to this or um, just give you some ideas of the way that you can put together some of the things that you might already have in your house to make an emergency comms kit or just a portable comms kit. I hope you found this video helpful and it gave you some ideas for a go box that'll meet your needs. Not counting the radios, the box components cost about $260 with about 
half of that being the case itself and the battery. Many of the components came in multi-packs, so there were pieces left over for future projects, or you could build with a buddy. Again, I'll leave links below. Take a look over here if you haven't seen my video review of the Gigaparts Explorer battery box yet. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Thanks for watching and 73.